Okay. Welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. My name is Jill and I'm happy to share some hmm, reflections and uh, practice with you tonight. Uh, I'll get this out of the way. So, yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to say this again. So uh, if I have a, a drink as I get dry mouth, um, it looks like I'm drinking beer and it's non-alcoholic beer. They're called partakes. So I just want people to know I'm not drinking while I'm giving a Dharma talk. Uh, it does really look like beer. So um, that aside, this past weekend, uh, I was away closing a cottage for family um, helping family out with that and I was doing a meditation and and also just lots of time of <laughs> laying down <laughs> resting on the couch because we'd had a very strenuous day the day before um, and I started kind of working with uh, meta practice meta phrases so a meta practice Metta bhavana is a um a practice of cultivating kindness with ourselves each other and all beings um it's a a way of uh cultivating kind intentions and opening our heart in in places where it may be constricted there's many ways to use this practice the kind of default that is in my awareness from my teachers is very simple. May I be happy. May I be well. Includes body and mind. May I be safe from inner and outer harm. And may I be peaceful. So there's many teachings on this and many recordings here on the True North Insight channel. And it's a whole... Thing we could focus on but I just want to reference that that was the context and uh, when I was practicing on the weekend I I started with those heart intentions and then uh, uh, I don't know it just happened organically where I kind of wanted to use that format of may I be or may I, um, and change it up a bit, like just felt what, what, what do I really wish for? What do I really want to cultivate? Of course, happiness, safety, wellness, peace, yes, to all of those, but I, mm, this arose, and so I wanted to share it with you. Um, So the first one that I really needed at the time and have still been working, practicing with it is may I rest. Um, and so I'll put a link down below in this. Uh, it's in the chat here, but also um, I'll put it down below in the YouTube recording to a talk I gave last week on rest and its importance to our practice and to our well-being. Um, and that's still pretty front and center for me these days and like really front and center <laughs> through the day. I rest whenever I can, had some hammock time this afternoon, couch time in between doing things like just resting. Um, yeah, so that feels very like it, it's just such a deep wish of kindness to myself may I rest and mm, it means it has many layers for me um, but it might be interesting for you to explore what does it mean for you to really rest how much is that a part of your life where you're not doing um, and also not like filling that time with other mm, entertainments like you know, phone addictions or whatever else, or even radio or other sounds, like just resting, which is different than 
I'm thinking different than sleep rest, although that's ultra important. <laughs> but I, I'm talking about like being awake and just being still, not even meditating necessarily, just resting. Um, and for me, it's calming my nervous system, my habit tensions in the body, habit reactions, resting the mind. You don't have to figure anything out just for a few minutes. Why don't you just rest? And just let the mind float around, do whatever it wants. I don't really think about what the mind is doing, just resting. Um, and I think of it as a deeply healing practice. And there's more about the healing nature of that in that link I'm talking about from last week. So then the second phrase or um, bhavana cultivation that I've been working with in this practice is may I let go and <laughs> let go not my favorite phrase by any means uh, but it's just a short form for s noticing may I notice where I'm holding on what am I actually holding on to, you know, in my mind and in my body and in my thoughts and in my becoming? Um, so may I let go of just let the breath go, let thoughts go, let figuring things out, let planning go, just notice the places I'm holding on and, and letting go happens. And these two together work like a little feedback loop. <laughs> the more I let go, the more I can rest. The more I rest, the more I can feel any tensions or grasping. And letting go has more possibility of happening. So I usually, I've just been hanging out between these two. May I rest? And I just stay there, rest, rest. May I let go? So anything that's catching me that I'm still sticking onto, may I let go? And yeah, they just um, kind of like feedback, uh, go deeper between these two for a while. And then uh, when I feel that my heart, body, mind really resting, and some of the clinging and activity in the body and mind and heart settle a little bit. And there's a sense of presence. Then I have been adding, may I open? So when I feel centered, gathered, rested, calmed, then the intention is the bhavana, the cultivation is, may I open? And this, for me, means opening into spacious awareness. Opening into interconnectedness, more than just, like, I need to include my self-care, and, and then I'm able to open to others and all beings. So, oh, just even opening viscerally to the space around me, to the space within to all beings, it's a naturally benevolent place of well-wishing, of interconnectedness. May I open? And then the last one is um, the deepest intention. Um, may I awaken? Um, and it's been interesting to use that kind of like a metaphrase. May I awaken? And I think this is, for me, what may I be peaceful means. Peaceful, for me, means free of dukkha, free of clinging, free of suffering, the suffering of suffering, um, which is liberating, which is awakening, which is freedom. So really naming it, may I awaken, awaken to how things are and awaken to the peace that abides underneath all the waves and all the contractions. 
And uh, we were talking in another Sangha, another group uh, this morning, one of the things that came up talking about trees right now, this is um, October 4th. Um, and here in, um, I'm, I'm living here in Six Nation territory. Um, and it's autumn and the leaves are changing and temperature <laughs> will be changing. Um, and the, the teachings of the trees to me, you can, you can put whatever interpretations you want on him, but, uh, may I rest? Yeah, it feels very grounding to me, like centering, like it the sap, the trunk, and grounding, may I rest, the roots spreading out deep and wide, and how in autumn, the beautiful colors that are revealed in the trees are um, apparently happen because the chlorophyll, the um, is drawn back into the core of the tree, and the, that we perceive as the color green reveals the colors that are already there underneath the oranges and yellows and reds um and so yeah to me this is like that resting that gathering in and settling down and wide roots and then may i let go pretty obvious like the autumn leaves that drop and someone was saying in our community this morning um they drove by a tree that just that particular tree in that moment was just like dropping all of its leaves just like just raining down like a real drop um and how seems from my perceptions that the leaf just the tree and leaf just let go <laughs> you know and it's just such a beautiful image of letting go and floating down and how that float you know the the letting go happens downwards which is again that feedback to resting letting go that that can happen and when the tree has let go of its leaves in the canopy there's this openness this spaciousness this expanse of sky may i open the branches are open and the canopy is revealed and we have that spaciousness that openness yeah so it's um it's not like a, a Dharma talk with sutta references. It's a Dharma talk coming from my personal practice um, that I hope might be of service for someone. And um, so let's let's check it out. Let's do this as a practice together. All right. So um, it's really uh, in my intention, it's... Uh, really a practice of akin to metta, uh, akin to friendliness and benevolence, kindness, com self-compassion, these kind of qualities. And so when we do these practices, it's said to be very important to um, make yourself as comfortable as you can. To So feel free now to adjust your space and... Uh, um, your lighting, any cushion you need, anything to uh, bring some kind awareness to your body in this moment. And uh, I'm just going to adjust my space here. Hmm. So as you, as you uh, bring in your supports for your body, you can find a posture for your eyes that feels supportive, 
depending on what time of day you're practicing. You might find it helpful to keep the eyes open a little bit to bring in some light. Whatever position of the eyes feels most restful for you and awakening. So the practice is bookended by rest and awakening. Um, so we want to feel some energy, some uprightness, even if you're laying down. And then resting the eyes, either closed or downward. And resting any tension that's gathered in the face. So widening across the forehead, letting the eyes drop back into the sockets. Letting the lower jawbone feel its weight. the tongue with all of its unspoken words, relaxing. And as the face relaxes, perhaps the shoulders drop down. And the hands come to rest. And then feeling into the center of the body, the heart center, the belly center, and see if there's activation here from your day, from your work, your worries, your activities. And can some rest some softness come to these areas. So that as the upper body softens, we may begin to feel more weightedness through the hips, legs, feet. We're bringing in the image of the tree and these roots going down and wide. With still this sense of central energy and uprightness. And then just try this on as a meta flavored phrase. May I rest? May I rest? May my heart, body, mind, nervous system find some rest, come to rest. So, whatever way is resonant for you. Feeling that sensation. If you like repeating the phrase internally, may I rest?
And as we are beginning our practice here of inviting rest, we might notice the arising of thoughts or sensations that feel like the opposite of that, feel like contraction or grasping. And so we can then add that second phrase, may I let go. May I let go. Letting go just for this period, just for now. May I let go of planning, worries, ruminating over things that have happened. And feeling how, as letting go happens, as we let go of clinging, more rest can be felt. So it feeds back into, may I rest? May I let go? And they keep deepening and feeding each other. Let's practice here for a bit. May I rest? May I let go. Resting like the roots of a tree and letting go like the fall leaves dropping. And then if you want or need to just stay with these two parts of the practice, may I rest, may I let go, please do. If you feel some sense of steadiness, calm, 
groundedness. You might like to add the next part, which is may I open. Like that tree canopy that's let go of its leaves, the sky the, is open. And we can feel that sense of space above our heads in the room that you're in. Sense and feel the space to either side of the body. If it's helpful, you can look at the space in the room. Feel the space in front of the body between you and any objects in front of you or the wall. And really do your best to include the space behind you. There's also space below you if you're sitting in a chair. For now, we'll just find some steadiness in the room that you're in. May, may I open? We open awareness, heart, mind. From this place of centeredness to include some awareness of all other beings. So that openness might expand beyond the walls of your space. And the last part of the phrases is, may I awaken? We practice for the ending of dukkha, for awakening to freedom, to feel liberated from suffering, to know liberation from suffering. So what does it feel like to just offer this into heart, body, mind, awareness? May I awaken, awaken to how things are, arising and passing beyond my control, interconnected with all of life. And so now we can practice with any aspect or move through each of these. May I rest? May I let go? May I open? May I awaken? May 
You can repeat these phrases, but really giving the emphasis to feeling the sensation, feeling the cultivation of these deep wishes, these deep intentions, aspirations. Rest, let go, open, awaken. If your nervous system feels particularly activated, you might want to just stay for a while with, may I rest? May I rest? If there's a lot of thoughts and busyness in the mind or tension in the body, may I let go? If you've been feeling very contracted or self-centered, it might be helpful to just stay for a while with may I open.
May I rest. May I let go. May I open. May I awaken. May we and all beings everywhere receive the rest that they need, as much rest as possible. May we and all beings everywhere have the wisdom and the opportunity to let go of clinging that causes suffering. May we and all beings everywhere open to our interconnectedness. And may we awaken. Awaken. Mm. I hope there's something in that practice that feels uh, supportive for you, especially if your team just lost. May you let go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's um, it's helpful for me. So I hope there's something in there that's uh, helpful for you. Thanks for joining us.